Okay, you're listening to Radio Shields Northeast, and I'm Amanda Joy, and uh, today I'm interviewing Heather. Heather um, is absolutely fantastic, and um, she's just got such an amazing story that she's going to share with us today. Um, so this month, as as we know, is all about birth and rebirth, and and Heather's Heather kind of like well, she started off life uh, as a, a travel agent. Um, became a very successful businesswoman. She was a wedding planner. So super organized, one of these super organized people that kind of like manage everything and can, can achieve anything and do whatever they want. One of those super powered people. And then um, she 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 got pregnant and during her pregnancy she had quite a challenging pregnancy, quite a tough time. And she also had quite a challenging birth as well. After she had um, her baby, she went through um, postnatal uh, challenges, uh, depression, had issues with low mood, anxiety and other things, and um, really felt like she needed to do something in her life to make some changes and I guess have her own rebirth experience. And um, she went on to study uh, a diploma in mindfulness. And now she's amazing because now she supports mums, she supports dads, she supports parents, caregivers, um, to to and gives them sort of skills, um, and 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 shares with them her, her experience about all of the things that have worked for her. And she also supports mums in business too, um, because you know for a mum who's got kids, it can be quite difficult to get to networking groups and marketing groups and and. Uh, business meetings so and um, she provides um spaces for mums to come together uh, support each other raise each other up and support each other's businesses as well so i am delighted to have you on the show tonight heather hello are you thank there? you, you so much thank you for having me yeah so i was introduced to you um through through my my lovely friend carmen we have to just give a little thank you to her. She, um, she's just the most warm and welcoming lady. I, I stay with her on a Monday when I work in Harrogate. I get spoiled. It's a lovely place to stay. You can B and B down in Harrogate. I can highly recommend it. And um, she spoke very highly of you and the work that you do, and uh, put me in contact with you because she thought she'd just be an amazing guest throughout our February shows because it's all about birth and rebirth, and you've kind of had. An interesting experience of both of those yes. things. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about your journey and sort of what happened. So, my journey stems back really all the way back to when I was at high school. Um, I was severely bullied at school um, and just struggled along with these that I didn't feel that I could speak to anybody um, about it. So, just kind of like just dealt with what I was given kind of thing. Um, I was raped at the age of 15. And again, never told anybody. Just I felt back then there was no social media back in those days. And I just felt, you know, my parents were well-to-do parents. You know, my dad was very highly known in the, you know, in our local community. He was a fireman. My mum was a nurse. And I just think I just thought, what about if they don't believe me? It's one of those things, you know, what about if they can't prove it? What about if, you know, they don't believe me? Um, and would I bring shame, you know, to the family? So I just kept quiet. And obviously that mentally affects you for the rest of your life. Um, as well as being raped, I tried to take my own life when I was 16. Luckily, obviously I didn't succeed because I'm here to speak to you, to you guys today. Um, um, so from then, went into disastrous relationships, mental abusive relationships, um, just, you know, and dom domestic abuse relationships, really. Um, when you've but, been through um, such a massive trauma as a teenager, um, I mean, you were a teenager, but you, you're not an adult at that time. You can't process things. Yeah. Amygdala is not fully developed, if you like, so you're not able to process that trauma. It's too much um, yeah. for anyone. But to, to have to keep that horrific violation uh, of your body and your mind, because that's what rape is, isn't it? It's a complete violation of your physical body, but it's a complete violation of your mind as well. Um, to yeah. have to have kept that secret and lived with that, it's, it's not surprising that 
the the relationships that you you chose as a younger adult um, were were destructive and and and, and painful, more pain. Um, it becomes it difficult is. to break out of that cycle of pain. Why it? I do what I do now is because all those years I was told I was fat, ugly, stupid, would never amount to anything, never be anything. I have people telling me that you shouldn't be here, here Heather, go and kill yourself, die. You'd never be successful. And you start to believe that. And then you start thinking you're the blame, that maybe I do deserve this. Maybe they are right in what they're saying. Um, so that just made it even harder for me to talk about it because I just felt that, you know, I attracted what I was getting for some reason and that I was to blame for it. Um, and then from the relationships, um, I've had five miscarriages, I've lost five babies, I was car hijacked and dragged from a car where I lost a baby as well. Um, I've had serious illnesses, I've lost my kidney and nearly died. I've had meningitis and nearly died. So I'm like, this show is perfect because I've been reborn quite a few times mm. um, and had experiences. Um, so after all my miscarriages, we finally conceived with Isaac, who is my miracle. He they told me that I would never carry him to the end. So it was a very traumatic pregnancy. I never felt him move, never felt him kick. I was in hospital like every week having his heart checked. Um, oh, I bled all the way through it. It was just absolutely the most horrific. You know, when you have so this... you were in fight and flight mode right through the pregnancy. Yeah. yeah, it was horrific experience. Having, you know, when people say, oh, it's wonderful being pregnant, you go through all this and you look forward to this and you can feel and move. I didn't experience any of that. Um, so I didn't get that pregnancy feeling or anything. Um, and then he was overdue. I was trying to be induced. He wouldn't come. Um, I got preeclampsia. Um, and then the C-section was very traumatic. I've got scarring from when I had my kidney removed, so they couldn't get to him. So it was just horrific from beginning to end, as you can imagine. Um, and then getting home with him was even obviously more traumatic. You know, a new mum who's always wanted a baby and been through so many losses and finally got this bundle of joy. And then you, there's no manual of what to do. And the C-section obviously can't move or drive or get out for six weeks and just feeling isolated. It was a horrific experience. Um, and then I got postnatal depression. I'm not surprised you got postnatal depression. I mean, you, you, you just had a, a experienced so much trauma. And, and just whilst I was uh, listening to you there, I was Googling how many women in the UK get raped. And, and actually it's 20%. 20% Crazy. of women have been raped. That's too many women getting raped in this country. Like, what the hell's going on? Do you know what I mean? I know. But, <clears throat> what, you know, you're not alone is basically, you know, it, it, there are a lot of women out there who've been raped, and, and that's not including sexual assaults, sexual attacks, being, being touched inappropriately in a sexual way, on a train, on a bus, in a bar. You know, it's, it's really and unacceptable. And, and so many women don't speak out as well and this is one of my missions now is to tell my story and share that there is light at the end of the tunnel and to have mm -hmm. that strength to speak out i wish that i'd spoke about mine now yes um, you know and sharing my story now i just hope that i can just help even if it's just one person that i can help then i've done my job by sharing my story Absolutely. um so after i'd, I, after I'd isaac um Obviously, Isaac's journey is another story. His is quite traumatic. Um, but before that, I sort of, probably about four years ago, I had my enough is enough moment. I just thought I was really rock bottom again with what was going on with Isaac. Mm. Um, I just thought, you know what? I'm still thinking about all these things that have happened to me and I can't let them win. I have been put on this earth for a reason. I need to be who I am and be unapologetically me. And yeah. I just had like my enough is enough moment mm. and I needed mm. to take control. Just thought mm. I can let them win and I don't have a life for the rest of my life and I die not speaking out and not really living my life or I take mm. control um, and work on myself and find my passion and what I'm meant to be here for and, and, and start talking. 
and um, that's so what I, I call that's what I call a rebirth moment because you just get to this point don't you where you think physically my body cannot take any more trauma yeah and like with yeah. with a rape with with a with the pregnancy with the birth and um, with the postnatal stuff, with all of the stuff that your body physically must have been holding so much trauma and pain and tension. Because I really believe that trauma is locked in the muscles of the body um, yeah. as well. You know, if we don't process it, if we don't have acceptance of that pain, if we don't deal with it properly at the time, it, it just gets trapped in the body. It's stored in the body. Um, and that can be as physical pain, it can be as, 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 as mental pain, emotional pain, and that it can manifest in how we react to people in our lives, but it doesn't seem to go away. It seems to get locked in the body it somehow, does. unless we I do just, something about it. <clears throat> it is. Yeah, I just felt like I lost my ident identity. Who is, that, Heather? Yeah. Who is Heather? And I just felt like I needed to re-identify who I was. Um, and have a mission in life and I knew yeah. that I'd seen, I strongly believe that now we're put through things for a reason I know that mm -hmm. I needed to go through the traumatic events to be who I, who I am today and what I'm now doing and helping other people um, so yeah so Isaac's journey after obviously I had my enough is enough moment I invested in a mindset coach worked on myself personal development self-care um, really worked on myself and I found positive affirmations um, and positive affirmations and journaling and all that jazz and mindfulness absolutely transformed my life completely um, I'm now a completely different person um, I go on the radio I've been in the newspaper um, I've had an article in a glossy magazine I guest speak on stage events um sharing my story and oh, hopefully helping as many people as possible um but then our journey didn't stop there um isaac is now 12 um but we had five years of what i could say pure hell really um they realized when he was about three that something wasn't quite right um and he's now being diagnosed with adhd and autism which we had to go private to get that diagnosis because of the waiting list was just absolutely horrific to get in seen by the children's mental health team which is another story um, <laughs> um so five years of trying to fight for him getting diagnoses getting him you know the help and support that he needed um we finally got him into a special needs school where he is now and thriving um, but a couple of years ago, he sort of like was at his lowest and he came home and he said to me, I want, I don't want to be here anymore, mum. I Aww. want to be gone. I don't yeah. fit in. Um, <laughs> I'm just really struggling. I've got no friends. I just don't want to be here anymore. Um, so as a mum who's already been through it herself, I knew I needed mm. to take control of that. And again, being told again that the waiting list to be seen again for the mental health team was three years how can you wait three years when you son is saying that he wants you to take you absolutely can't life? you absolutely can't wait three years and and i and I, I want to go back to that point you you made about um when when you you know when you first became a mum because there are a lot of new mums out there who who really do feel like they have lost a sense of who they are like who is heather yeah. i just thought that was such a thick, you know an important thing and um I think what one of the things that the mindfulness has done for many, many people, and I'm sure for you too, is it's, it's reconnected you to that sense of who you are, who is Heather. And, and mm. for you, it's not only reconnected you to you, but it's enabled you to help other people who are feeling like that too. And, and I think that's magic. And then to have to then go through like uh, uh, challenging times, like working out how to, how to best educate your son, how to best care for him. And, and obviously having that diagnosis there's some definite benefits to having diagnosis you get a label which i guess means that you can get yeah. access to funding and health and care but um there's a massive there's a massive um procedure isn't there to, to get there that. Is, it's horrific and and then when he was in mainstream school having that label that he was somebody different and the treatment that he got from other children and and teachers um was just horrific for him so yeah you know having that label does have its pros and cons seriously but you know without him being medicated now and having that support 
I think our life would be much different. So the fight was worth it. And if we can share our story as well, we share Isaac's story. Now that's something that we do with the business that we both do together. Mm. Um, you know, sharing both our stories mm. can help so many people out there. And that's what our mission is because our mission now is to change the mental health for our future generation because it is needed. Mm. There is God, no support for me. Yeah. Those years ago, and there's no support now, you know, 25, 30 years later for. Yeah. Our son. I just want to shout amen and jump up and down when you say that because I so believe that you're right in that it's. Um, it's, 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 it's like the Cinderella of the uh, health services, isn't it? The mental well being part. Um, yeah. they're very very good if you've lost a leg very very good if you need surgery but if the problem is kind of invisible if it, if it can't be seen if it's only be spoken about or, or for some people if they don't know how to speak about it um the, the options are have some tablets or wait three years to find out whether we can actually do anything and help you and yeah. that's uh, that's inadequate so tell me a little bit a bit more about your journey that you share with others and how that helps people. So after Isaac's obviously enough is enough moment and obviously he wanted to not be here anymore. I knew I needed to take control. Um, so I thought, what can I do? So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to share with him what helped me with my journey and my transformation. So I started working with him on his mindset started surrounding him with positive things, listening to audibles with him, um, doing affirmations together every day, jumping up and down every morning, shouting out our blessings and um, affirmations. We did a lot of journaling together because I feel that, you know, my I call it brain dumping. I absolutely love a good brain dump. Um, What's a brain dump? What brain dump? What's a brain dump? out of your head onto paper. Um, and it gives you that massive release because when we're feeling anxiety and we're feeling like there's so much going on in our heads and for Isaac with ADHD, his head's going like 50 miles per hour and with Isaac as well, he can't express his emotions and doesn't know how to tell me how he feels very well. Um, so for him to actually write it is a massive um, release for him. Um, and that's journaling has been a massive part of my transformation as well. I just feel that when you get it onto paper, you feel like a massive release has just left your body and your mind, and mm -hmm. you can deal with things a lot easier. Because I think if we don't release what's going on in our brain, sometimes we just get that overload, that overwhelm. We don't know where mm -hmm. to start. We don't know what yeah. to do, and that's when breakdowns can happen. And we need to, you know decipher what's going on in our brains and break it down and putting it onto paper um so a piece of advice number one is uh, get yourself a notebook i love a sparkly notebook and a sparkly pen oh and, yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and write and those children, thoughts and feelings down for children me and isaac have now brought out a journal to help them so we've put questions and worksheets in there to help them so everything that Ooh. helps isaac we've put together into a journal now and we do how a month can we get as well. hold of that journal how can we get hold of that journal that sounds amazing I yes, on our website which is mindsetandme.com and and it, it how does it come when when you when you do you receive it in the post or how does it work yeah the, the journals are all via amazon so our website will take you to our amazon shop and you just order it on amazon and if you've got prime you can have it next day Oh, that's brilliant. So you could just get a notebook and a pen and start writing it down. Or you could get on Amazon and get this. Um, what's it called? The book? It's the called, journal? Um, yeah, it's a Mindset and Me um, Daily Affirmation Journal. Mindset and Me Daily Affirmation Journal. That sounds ace. I need a copy in my life. I need to have that in my life. That sounds ace. Um, <laughs> I don't have my own children. I just want it for me. Hello. <laughs> I'm a big child, so it's fine. Um, it's got a beautiful yes. rainbow on it that Isaac designed as well, so it's even better. Yay, I love it. That's so good. <laughs> okay, so journaling was one thing. Writing it down and, and the benefits that just getting it out of your head so it's not overwhelming you anymore. Writing it onto paper, it just really helps, doesn't it? To, um, it does. Put it into perspective. Sometimes things feel much bigger than they are. Sometimes they're bigger. And they need to be, and something needs to be done about it. If you write it down, it's easier to 
to decipher, isn't it? Like whether it's just overwhelm that you're experiencing and it's a small thing, or whether this is a big thing and you need to do something, take some action on it. But when you write it down, you get that perspective, don't you? And then yeah. you can actually sort of start to move forward. Definitely, so definitely. Journaling so. and affirmations. Tell me a bit more about your affirmation work. So affirmations, we just shout out things in the morning like, I am amazing, I am awake, I am loved, I am beautiful, all sorts of different positive affirmations um, to start your day well, because if you pump our brains with positive things, that's what our brain believes. So all those years I believed all those bad things that people were telling me, you need to twist it round and tell your brain the good mm. things, because the more we tell it, the more we believe it. Um, so that was my mission with Isaac, doing that. And we did lots of law of attraction work as well. What we put out to the world is what you get back. Um, and yeah, we just did lots of mindfulness work together. And it really transformed his life. School noticed a massive difference. Um, people was inboxing us. We were getting hundreds of inboxes. Can you help us? Um, what have you been doing? And we just thought, wow, there's such a need out there. And massive I need. Said, Mm. Yeah, Isaac like, said, Mummy, how can we help these people? We need to share what we've done. So that's when Mindset and Me was born 18 months ago. Isaac designed the logo, is very much part of the business. Um, so you might catch him going live, doing his affirmations and things like that. Oh, um, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you'll have, will you share with me um, on the Radio Shields Facebook page? Um, oh, so well. Isaac yeah. doing some of his affirmations I want to yeah. see that that sounds so amazing I love yeah, it so much um, involved and we just want to now share our story what we've been through how we've overcome it and share the different things that we've done because there's so many people that need help and support out there not getting it mm. families children um, so we do a lot of mental health awareness. We're bringing out a t-shirt um, range shortly to promote mental health well-being um, and to make awareness. There's just not enough people that speak about it um, and it's needed. It is needed. You know, the mental health is on a rise for children massively and it's the highest it's ever been. Mm. I mean, if we look at sad and it needs changing. If, if we look at what causes um, problems with mental well-being, it's it's isolation, it's bullying at school, it's sort of um, there's, there's so many there's so many different things that can contribute yeah. to to mental well-being, and it just it, it's you know poor mental well-being if you like. And um, if you if you just take a step outside the door and really think about the world that our children live in. Um, it's it's a different world to the one I grew up in, and I yeah. and, you know and and there's definitely a lot more mental well being issues with younger people nowadays. But it's well, there is that we're so much on about social it. media, isn't there? So much on you know social media has got its pros and cons. You know I couldn't run my business without social media, but mm. it also has its drastic you know um, you know downside to social media you know what our mm. youngsters are seeing on social media instagram feeling that they have to look like these pretty pictures that they see that are not real on face on facebook and instagram and um, the pressure on them is immense um and something we test you know, them we put them yeah. through these horrific tests however many times and put them on a sliding scale and tell them how they're gonna do we make yeah. we, we almost make um, hypnotic suggestions to children don't we about how well they're going to do you're going to be one of those children that achieve whereas you're not going to be because we tested you and our test says this and it's like yeah. oh this is weird whatever happened to letting a child develop at the, the right pace for them and whatever happened to encouraging creativity self-expression um it's it's, yeah. it's Exactly, the pressure on them at school is immense. You know, the homework they're coming home with is just crazy. Luckily, Isaac doesn't really get homework with the school that he goes to, but my friends all have children that go to a mainstream school, and I hear them. You know, some of them don't stop homework from the minute they get home from school till nine o'clock at night. What pressure is that on our children? It's crazy. It's crazy. Let them yeah. be children. 
absolutely they need to need to play they need to use their imaginations they need to be creative and they're coming home after school and uh, they're they're stressed out i mean i i i i've been a massage therapist for over 20 years and and in the 20 years that i've been working i don't haven't really worked with children very much in the last year i've started seeing more children now than ever people are bringing their kids to me for a massage because they're recognizing that their stress. kids have got have got stressed stressed out and i'm and I'm, I'm working with children who are not sleeping at night they're grinding their teeth i'm working with children who are having uh, night terrors I'm working with children who are acting out in aggressive ways I'm working with children who are wearing heart monitors during the day because they're 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 having palpitations and and, and panic awesome. attacks and they're 10 do you know what i mean they're 10 years old yeah. and it's like what are we doing to our children so Crazy. what do you so with, with you with you and isaac you've got your you've got your affirmations um which are amazing um one of the things that i did when i was teaching a little bit of mindfulness with kids is i talk about the benefit of posture just standing differently and i used to call it the superhero pose yeah. Um, getting children to stand differently and breathe differently um, and yeah. then make those declarations and those affirmations. It's really, really That's powerful. Bre breathing techniques have been a massive one for us. That's one of the mindfulness techniques that have really worked for Isaac. Um, so we do like what's called the roller coaster breather, uh, breathing. So you put your fingers out and you trace with your finger around your fingers. So you take a deep breath in, up one side of your finger, then breathe out and go around your hand. So it's like a roller coaster. And that's one Ooh. breathing technique that's really helped Isaac as so you, well. You've got, you've got your hand and you kind of draw a line from your wrist up to your, the top of your thumb. And then you kind yep. of draw a line down the side of the thumb and up your finger. And then yep. you just go down and up your finger. So each time you go up, you breathe in. And each time you go breathe. down, you breathe out. Breathe out. That's right. That, that's a really good one. Um, yeah. What's that? Oh, I forget the name of that computer game that the kids all love where they, have, they build things with squares. Is it a oh, Minecraft? Minecraft, that's it. So I, I worked with a little boy who I, I told him to do some Minecraft breathing, um, which was you imagine the Minecraft block and you trace yeah. the block, so you breathe in, you hold your breath, you breathe, you, you breathe out, yeah. you have an empty, an em you have empty lungs for a little while. So it's breathing, hold, breathe out hold breathe in hold breathe out hold. and it's just equal breaths equal matching breaths in mindfulness as a great way of bringing back um, equilibrium and mm -hmm. and harmony within the body that's very very good just for bringing back that balance and uh, like short breath in long breath out 7 11 breathing is another one yeah, that is really awesome. good for, for um telling the body because you know when we're stressed and anxious we change how we breathe so equally, mm. if we change how we breathe, we can manage our emotions because it works both ways. Yeah. Um, and that's magic, isn't it, that we can use? Definitely. Breathe. And touch is another one. So for like myself, when I get anxiety still, uh, for Isaac, what I do, if you touch your body or like stroke your body, it sends signals to your brain that you're okay because mm. our body goes into like the fight mechanism. If you think something's scary, it tries to protect you, doesn't it? Of course. Um, so you need to tell your brain that you're okay so when you're feeling that bit of anxiety if you just like lightly stroke your hands or your arms or anything like that it sends signals to your brain that you're okay because you're stroking yourself and making yourself feel calmer so what i do if pe you know if you don't want people to see you stroking your arms it's not necessarily easy to go around stroking your body is it but if you do like um round and round the garden like used to like for the kids like on your on path, the palm of the hand oh, yeah like little circles like round around the garden and just if you're feeling anxious just keep doing that over and over again and that will send signals to your brain that do you know what i'm okay i'm not in any danger i'm going to release that bit of anxiety and make you feel better now because i know that you're safe i love that, so that really I love it. yeah have you have you done any story massage have you heard of story massage yes um, we did our first ever mindfulness workshop just before, well, it was probably October time last year. So I went into collaboration with another mum who does like mindfulness work and we did the, like the workshop together and we did a lot of story 
um, massage then it was brilliant the, the kids absolutely I love it. it I love it never mind the kids I love it I want somebody <laughs> to, to give my back a rub and tell me a nice story I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful I a beautiful I technique like yeah. so we've got we've got writing it down we've got journaling um, which you people can get your your journaling and an affirmation yeah. book from Amazon or you can just get a notebook and write it down. That's Hold really, down. really helpful. Notebook and a sparkly pen. Um, breath work, really powerful breath work, powerful affirmations, changing posture, things like that. And the power of touch as well. So if you've got a yeah. child who is, is having a, a difficult time um, and, and they are regularly having a, a major meltdown, um, a tantrum, um, what other things could you bring into place in addition to sort of the journaling, the, the breath work, the mindfulness um, and the affirmations? What kind of other things do you bring into play when, when you know, say when Isaac's having a really tough time, you must have been through some of these ones. Oh, what yeah. Do you do? Um, different things work all the time. You know, what works one day doesn't work the next. So it's just finding what works for you. I think when they're having meltdowns, it's really, really quick to like try and not maybe you like shout at them or you just try to like hold them so they don't hurt themselves, but it doesn't work. And going back to the touch, what I do now with Isaac, I make sure that he's obviously in a safe place. Um, when they're having meltdowns, no matter what you're saying to that child they're not going to listen to they're in that fight mode that something is upsetting them they're having a meltdown for a reason so no matter what you say to that child it's not going to work because they're not interested in anything you are going to say to them so it's just letting them know they're not able to process any, any they're not able to process oh, anything when they're in that, that state so, so it's you know, pointless having Exactly. When Isaac was having his meltdowns, originally when I was still learning, I was like, oh my God, I've got to stop him and like trying to like rec um, rationalise with him and say, well, no, you can't do it. That You know, it doesn't work because they can't process it. So now I just make sure that he's safe. I just, if he's in his bedroom, I just sit quietly somewhere in the bedroom just so he knows that I'm there. I just say everything's okay. You're safe. If I can get near him to touch him, I will stroke his back. So that's going back to the touch. Um, or just providing somewhere in the house, if you are at home when they're having a meltdown, where they can go for their safe place. So like maybe having a tent set up somewhere or bean bags in a corner of the room, just so they know that they've got a safe place to go where they can go and calm down. And there's no point talking to them about anything until the, the, until the calm. So just... Um like pour love out basically over them and 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 hold yes. the space and and we're not good at silences are we in the uk we, we like to fill we like to fill silences <laughs> yeah. with noise but sometimes just being silent and holding and just being with them in a, in a space and being silent is really really all that they need it and is. words of words of comfort uh, and you know touch that's comforting if it's possible to do so and then once they're calm that's when you can approach them with a with a calmer and a quieter voice isn't it and how so there's all yeah. those 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 learning discussions that you need to have as a parent with your child <laughs> you've got to have those they've got to have those learning discussions oh, yeah. haven't you and those yeah. there's got to be that discipline there as well hasn't there but um yeah like you say while they're in that meltdown mode they're not hearing anything that you're saying um I've, I've seen it I've seen it in supermarkets where there's an overwhelmed mom or an overwhelmed dad or an overwhelmed carer and you can see that kid is playing up and they've been clearly doing it for quite some time um, and, and the children are great at pushing your buttons oh yes um, and I always <laughs> say that the reason that children are really great at pushing your buttons is because you've taught them that you've shown them how to do it you've sewn them buttons on because you're their parents and they know exactly how to push your buttons. And if they're doing it in the middle of, I don't know, Sainsbury's, and you've had enough, it's quite a challenge, isn't it? And I've seen a lot of parents who do who do almost quite aggressively shout at their children. Um, and I, I totally understand it. But they're not hearing you. They're not hearing you when they're in that mode. That child needs calm, quiet, and then, you know, sort out the discipline side of it later when they can actually yeah. hear you. 
it's an interesting an interesting an interesting uh, perspective so it's not just i mean you do this amazing work with children but you you also support parenting quite a big way as well tell us a little bit more about the work you do with mums um as well isn't it but, but a lot a lot with mums tell us a bit more about what you do yeah. there. so um i'm part of an association called the mums in business association it was launched in 2017 in june 2017 by two sisters estelle and leona um, the both um, mums in business. Leona is an entrepreneur. She's had um, business. She's had her own acting school. She's had her own shop. She's been, um, you know, just a serial entrepreneur. She's got five children, and her sister Estelle was a single mum at the time um, with two boys, and she was a she's a get my words out photographer, and together they just thought, Do you know what? There's just nothing out there for support for mums especially in business but women in general and um, they felt very isolated they felt lonely um, they didn't feel that there was any networking events that were child friendly that they wouldn't you know they couldn't get child care for them to be able to go to breakfast meetings and things like that so they launched a facebook group um, in 2017 and within like weeks it just exploded they didn't expect the reaction that they got from it and in this group they were just giving support tips in business just having like a safe hub for women to come and talk about not just their business but home life or anything that they felt that they needed help with and then from there now um, we've got nearly 55,000 in the group now women wow, all over the world that's amazing absolutely incredible and from running your group, business running a business by yourself is really tough anyway but yeah. um if you're if you're a if you're a single mom or a mom um and you know you've got you, you, it's a military precision operation isn't it being it a parent is. and in addition Absolutely. to your business i don't know how you do it getting to those networking meetings is just near on impossible yeah, exactly and they just wanted to show you know that there's a place for women to support um and then from the group the networking events were born um now today okay. we've got events in i think 140 locations worldwide um we're in obviously all over the uk we're in barbados new zealand australia america singapore um you know we're, we're expanding on a massive rate the girls so exciting something you know phenomenal and it's child friendly networking events that mums can come to women can come to um and feel supported and network for their business Amazing. and not feel isolated where do they um, have these where do they have these networking meetings are they all up and down the country or are they in specific so, towns yeah, I, the, I run lancashire um so there's meetings in lancashire and i'm also the head coordinator now for uk and ireland so i look after the whole of the uk um, and look after all wow. the coordinators <laughs> We've got 120 coordinators now just in the UK alone. Um, so we're all over, you know, 120 locations from Scotland down to Cornwall. Um, so if anybody is listening to this, that they are a woman in business and want to come and do some networking, they'll be able to find their local one on the website, the Mums in Business Association com. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. I love that you bring such practical support as well um it's amazing so um you you are just such a beacon of hope for people who have been through a really really tough time you 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 look amazing you are Thank you me. are glowing and, and and the passion when you talk about the support that you offer it just flows out of you um, it, it's exciting to, to hear such positive stories and i mean you 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 have just been through such a very, very, very challenging and dark time. Um, and you, you, you have, you've come out of the other side and not only have you healed yourself, but you've, um, you, you, you've helped to heal your own son. And now that work is, is, is being shared with other mums and dads as well. So thank you for the work that you do. Oh, we well, need more people like you because as you said, our, our current system is not in place. So people do yeah. need to to reach out and, and look for for, uh, for that support elsewhere. And um, if people who are listening to the show 
want to get in touch with you how, how do they do that yeah we're on social media and um, we've got a website like i mentioned earlier so they can get us on our website which is mindsetandme.com or uh, we've got a facebook page mindset and me um and the mindset and me support group as well and we're also on instagram amazing so if you're a new mum if you're a mum with uh, just a mum if you're just a mum <laughs> and you feel like you need some support if you want some guidance if you want some help learning more about these amazing techniques that work so well don't they they're absolutely oh, yes. and so simple um a friend of mine made um a gratitude gal with her children and what she does is she gets them at the end of each day to to think of something that was good that happened that they're grateful for that's and what we do yeah to write it on a piece of paper and stick it in a jar and when they're having a bad day she'll say right she'll get the jar out down and they go through the jar and all the bits of paper with all the lovely things that are written on them these are simple simple low cost uh things that you can do that are so powerfully effective great tools for mums great tools for dads great tools for caregivers of any type and, and practical help for children and um, bringing about some of these mindful techniques into the family uh, and into your home in, in a cost-effective way it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant I love thank it. you i love it so i'm going to share all your details on our uh, radio shields facebook page as well and will you will you will you post up one of uh, one of your little ones uh, affirmation sessions i really want to see that oh, well done. yes <laughs> brilliant and uh, yeah thank you so much for being a guest on the show today it's just so nice to have, have you know such a positive strong story to share with other mums um who are hopefully listening to this oh and uh, oh that went a bit strange there but anyway <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks again and uh, if you want to uh, reach out and get in touch with heather you can do um, and find all that information on our radio shields uh, 